All right, I have my two panels completed for my Summer's End cardigan, and I have counted from my bottom row up to the row that I need to seam for my back panel. So I'm pretty much looking at my, uh, my garment the way it will look. So this will be the front, which will stay open, and then I will seam from the bottom where I stopped crocheting, if you left your work, your yarn attached, I will seam from that row all the way up to the indicated row for my size. Okay, and you'll want to pay attention to make sure your um, triangles are all facing the same way. Mine are inverted here down, and I have my, uh, so this is right side, so I've marked my cluster there so I know which way I want it, just to make sure on both of them. Okay, so for seaming, I am going to use a slip stitch first because you can very simply slip stitch this seam together and I've left my yarn on to do that. This would be the easiest if you're not um, used to sewing but you are used to crocheting. So I'm just matching up my bottom stitches here with my yarn ready to go. And I'm going to go into my first stitch and slip stitch across. So as I work, I'm just going to keep making sure that my rows are lined up. And then I'm just going to kind of pull up a loose loop. I don't want it to be terribly tight. I don't want the seam pulling. Go under two loops on the side of these double crochets or um, maybe you're working into chains and slip stitch that together. Now the way I have mine put together right here, this is going, the seam that I'm creating is going to be on the inside. So just keep matching up your rows, inserting your hook under the stitches, pulling a loop through, keeping a nice even tension. You can do that all the way up. Okay, you can see the slip stitches here, and put a loop there. If I flip it over, you can see what it'll look like on the outside. You can't really tell what's going on there, so that's what you that's what you want. Or maybe you want a more decorative seam, and you want to put your slip stitches on the outside, so you flip your work over so that you could see that seam running down. Or maybe you want to just use your yarn needle to go through and seam that up using a mattress stitch, which is also a great way to do it. So you'll seam from the bottom row where you stopped to the, uh, basically to the back of the neck is where you want it to stop seaming. Okay, when you are ready to seam up the sides and leave your armholes, you're just going to measure off your armhole uh, length that's indicated in the pattern. So you have your, your back panels um, sewed together up to the neck, and then you fold over your front panel, over the back panel. See, I've already put a stitch marker there where I want to stop sewing, and uh, measured my armhole depth here. For medium, it's seven and a half inches. So each size will be a little bit different. And you just come down to the bottom. And here I'm going to show you the mattress stitch. And again, just like seaming the back, we want to go row for row and uh, keep our tension nice and even. So if you want to seam all of your seams with um, mattress stitch, that's what I did on my first Summer's End cardigan. So. Um, Again, there's just lots of different seaming options, so I wanted to show you a couple. So thread your yarn needle with your length of yarn, match up your bottom stitches, and you'll want to do some kind of locking. So I'm going to use more of a whip stitch here to start. Let me zoom in a little for you on this. So going under both loops, both panels here on the side, 
I'm going to pull through, but not all the way through. There's a tail there because you will need to leave that in. And then I'm going to insert my needle right back into the same stitch that I just came out of to kind of lock it. Now, if I kept pulling tight, I would pull it all the way through, but for the most part, that keeps it from just unraveling quickly. And I'll have to um, leave that in securely. You can also tie a knot. And just like um, seaming your back, if unless you want a decorative seam that shows, then you want to be seaming with your um, wrong sides together so that your right side is on the inside. And that way the seam, uh, the bulkiest part of the seam will be on the inside of your garment. So very similar to our um, other seaming technique where we go under two loops on one side, two loops on the other, and just pull through. And we're gonna zigzag back. And again, as we go, we'll be using our um, rows to make sure we have row for row lined up, checking every couple. Now you don't wanna pull anything too tight you obviously don't want it too loose either. Just right, snug, not puckering. And just do that back and forth. I'm actually faster at this than slip stitching. All the way up to your, to your stitch marker, leaving this for your armhole open. When you get to the end of your seam, you'll use the same technique that we started with where you go right back into the one you finished to kind of lock it and then weave it away. And then that way you have a nice um, flat seam when you do a mattress stitch. Again, if you're looking, the side you're looking at, it should be the inside. So this will be what it looks like on the inside you flip it over, it's nice and flat. So you can use a mattress stitch on um, any seam you want to lay flat for garments. Um, it's an excellent stitch to do. I'm gonna unlock that one now. Okay, and that's how you seam up the sides.